use the bisection method to find where cosine of x equals square root of 3 sine x on the interval 0 to pi halves. So we're going to apply the intermediate value theorem to get the bisection method. So what we're going to need is a function f continuous on the closed interval a, b, including the endpoints. We'll need on the endpoints that their values have opposite signs. And then the intermediate value theorem is going to say our function is going to be equal to 0 for some point x that lives inside our original interval. For the bisection method, what do we do? We're going to have our interval on the endpoints that we're going to have opposite signs. We check the midpoint. For the midpoint, three things can happen. Your function can be 0 at the midpoint, in which case you're done. You found your 0. Or you're going to have a positive or negative number, and the idea is to pick the interval that keeps the signs opposite. Then you keep taking the midpoint, going back and forth, and the idea is that if I keep doing this, this is going to drive me down to the point where our function is equal to 0. Okay. So what, I'm, what I need here is we're not given the function. We just need to figure it out. Well, if I want cosine of x equal to radical 3 sine x, Note if I push this to the other side, we're really looking for where cosine x minus radical 3 sine x is equal to 0. So that's what I'm going to choose for f. Then we notice, we check on the endpoints, f of 0 is equal to 1, f of pi halves is going to give me minus radical 3. So these definitely have opposite signs, so the intermediate value will, theorem will apply. Okay, so what's our midpoint? Well, I'm going to take midpoint from 0 to pi halves. So that's going to be pi over 4. And we figure out what the value of pi over 4 is. Okay, for cosine sine, that's going to be squared 2 over 2. So if I crunch this with the calculator, I'm going to get minus 0 0.5176. That's a negative value. So we're going to use the endpoint that has the positive value. f of 0 is equal to 1. So our new interval is going to be from 0 to pi over 4. So we know that the zero for the function is going to live somewhere in here. Okay, that's stage one. We go to stage two. So we have our intervals now zero to pi over four. It's midpoint. It's just going to be add them and divide by two. So that's going to give me pi over eight. Now I just evaluate the function at pi over eight. So for f of zero, we had one. F of pi over four, we just saw was minus 0.5176. And then if I evaluate at pi over eight, I'm going to need a calculator. I'll get 0.26. So the value here is positive. So I'm going to choose the endpoint, which has the negative value, which is going to be pi over 4. So my next interval that I use is going to be from pi over 8 to pi over 4. So that's stage 2. Stage 3, we're going to take the midpoint from here. So our points are pi over 8, pi over 4. Add those together and divide by 2. That gives me 3 pi over 16. I evaluate the function at 3 pi over 16. Calculator work. So I get minus 0 0.130. That's going to be a negative value. So we're going to continue with the endpoint that has the positive value, which is pi over 8. So we're going to go with this interval here. And then we can go on and on and on. But we'll stop here. So if I stop at stage 3, our guess for the 0 is going to be the midpoint. So it's going to be 3 pi over 16. That's roughly 0 0.589. What's the actual answer? Well, if you took a look at this, you notice 1 half and square root of 3 over 2 go together. So this is going to be either pi 6 or pi thirds to get the solution to this. The actual is going to be pi over 6. Okay, pi over 6 is roughly 0.524. So you see, we're in the ballpark of this. We're not exact, but we're close. What else can we get? We also have a bound on the error. Because I know the actual point lives inside this interval somewhere, the worst that my guess can be is the length of the entire interval. So our error is going to be at most 3 pi 16 minus pi 8, which gives me pi over 16. That's roughly 0.196. Our actual error, let's take the difference. So that's going to be the difference in the actual answer, which is pi 6, minus our guess, which is 3 pi over 16. That gives me 0.065. So we see that our actual error lives inside of our bound for the error. So that's good.
Okay, one last thing we should check just to um, see how bad we are. If I put 3 pi 16 into cosine and sine, you'll notice what's going to come out. 0 0.831 and 0.556. So you see that here we have 0.5 is our real answer. So that's sort of in the ballpark of our 0 0.556. And then for the cosine, that's square root of 3 over 2. That's going to be about 0 0.86. And this guy is sort of in the ballpark. So we'd need to do a lot more iterations to sharpen that up, depending on how close we want it to be. So that's your bisection method for solving when the function is not given to you explicitly. The point here is we had to dig that function out somehow.